Hey everyone, um, guess what? We almost made it to the end of the uh, semester. So we literally have like um, this left and maybe a summary, like I'll be covering everything we have um, covered in the class so far, give you an idea of like what's going to be in the exam and so on. So yeah, yay, we made it. So today um, we are going to talk about the um, GDB we are going to use GDB to take a look at like how the list looks like. So like on the, in the previous um, in the previous lecture, we saw the generic list implementation in C, and in this uh, lecture, we are going to see how to GDB that. And um, all the examples are posted in the course website. Yeah, it it says that maybe it's available, but it actually is. Okay. So if you want to test this out, you can just like go there and download the file and run GDB by yourself. Um, so yeah, let's get started. <clears throat> um, so we are going to um, take a look at the uh, whole GDB thing and like how we represent pointers and list, like the generic list we have seen in the previous class and um, how to go through it. So again, this is not going to be in the exam, but it is going to help you um, during your um, binary bomb. So um, it's important and not important because sometimes you can literally just like brute force your way in binary bomb. Probably not the greatest idea to do that because uh, you might trigger the bomb time to time. But um, other than that, yeah, um, this GDB tools are going to help you out because so far you have probably been using like um, running it and then hitting into a um, segmentation fall then doing backtrace and doing frame and um, looking at the variables using print and all of those so over here you will see some um, typecasting in the printing so yeah this is how our um, like payload is going to look like um, so we're going to have a character like character pointer word and how many frequency there are okay so um, we're typecasting it these are the helper functions we are going to have for this um, implementation okay so there's like uh, init word frequency uh, increment decrement equals clear print so it's like um, Java but they are not part of a class but instead they are just like um, direct implementation like you know structured programming our duct tape is going to be holding the word record okay so this one is going to be our payload okay and then like always we have the denote node okay and to initialize it we are going to have a function for it the D node looks just like before. We have a previous and next. We uh, for D list we have the head and tail just like before, and then we are going to initialize it using this macro. These are some of the uh, helper functions that we are going to be um, take a look at. There's push back, there's push push front, insert, and um, pop front, pop pop back, remove. We're just going to see one or two of them but like these are available again you can take a look at the implementation for better understanding okay so these are also available we will probably not use them but like these are important for the fully fully generic and uh, like fully generic um, linked list okay so um, this is the first driver code we are going to take a look at so we are going to create uh, a pointer of array so it's like pointer of pointer right but by doing this we are actually doing a static allocation and the first one is going to be 0 1 2 3 4 first we are making it then we are creating a dlist out of it then we are um, running it okay so we have the word record our um, payload then we are doing a malloc we are um, creating of the size of dt then we are checking whether um, it was allocated or not then we are going to 
initialize the word record with what we have like with the um this we are sending it as a parameter we are sending our words one by one we are having the index and then we are going to initialize our dt with the um pwdt which is this okay and we are going to send our word record so it's going to populate the whole data structure one by one because we are doing this pushback okay sounds pretty uh, straightforward and over here we are going to print it just to check whether it's working or not and next we are going to do is run gdb on it um with gdb we will be seeing how um the data structure looks like inside c okay so we will be compiling it with um this specific option ggdb3 it makes sure that um, the implementation like the c implementation of your code is provided to the um, executable file if you do not provide it uh, you are just going to get the assembly version of it which we will be seeing in the next lecture okay so um, in this um, slide we are going to avoid some of the unnecessary information because whenever you run gdb there's like huge lines of like um, declaration like who made GDB and all of those and what type of options you have available so we're just literally going to um, skip those so the first thing we're going to do is put a breakpoint at line 22 okay after uh, setting the breakpoint we're going to run because if we don't set a breakpoint it's just going to run the um, program normally and just do a inferior one because like it ran successfully okay so we are running it and the first thing it does is stops at the first breakpoint which is our uh, list initialization okay so what we are going to do is the first thing we are going to do is to check what's inside our array words so to do that we are just going to use print words or we can use p words these are interchangeable so i uh, use whichever you want when we do that, uh, we get this array, okay? So um, does this array make sense? So take a look over here. So um, the difference between these two are four, okay? The difference between these two are four. Difference four, four. So it's just like we have seen before, right? Um, like it's a stack basically. And all the um, datas are like um, stored one by one. Actually, not the data itself. Their uh, address is stored one by one um, because it's a pointer, right? It points to a completely different address where the actual data is stored. But you get the idea, right? So, uh, like I said, these are the values stored in the array of the words. These are the values. Uh, it just stores like where they are stored. And these are the pointers, like uh, value of the pointers, okay? So this is what they are pointing at, okay? I, I, I think this makes sense. Like uh, you have went through pointers way too many times. Like I have put emphasis on pointers so much that at this point it should be like beat into your head. And honestly, it's really going to help you in the later part of your life, trust me. So yeah, then, uh, like uh, this is where it hit then we are going to continue okay so n basically means next so you can either write next or n whatever you like then we have our for loop and in the for loop we are going to check our my list okay so this is what our my list looks like so my list was a um, d list right so d list has a head and a tail so it's previous points over here and it's next points over here surprisingly tail is doing the same thing so um, let's take a closer look at it okay so we can see um, the addresses of my list head and my list tail so uh, if we write this print my list dot head you see that we are dereferencing it here, right? Or referencing it here. And then we are checking the head. So this is the value 
like this is where it's pointing at and this is a pointer type of the node okay we can do the same for uh, my list tail which points over here so um now do the contents of my list appear to be correct let's take a look like even even um for the look okay so yeah the um values actually make sense so uh, if you compare uh, the addresses of the two node objects to the values of their previous and next pointers, we get this. So we have our head, we have our tail. Um, this is how they are like um, organized, okay? So uh, head has two values. One of them is previous and the other one is next. So at this value, previous points here, and next points here and this is for tail tail points here and uh, tails previous points here and tails next points here okay hmm so they are literally pointing in the same direction for now so after the initialization this um, thing is going to be fixed so um let's create our first word record and word record dt so what we are going to do is doing next basically we're going to move forward with the code and because it was created it's going to move forward and then it's going to initialize it this is where those values change okay so then we are going to print wr so this is what wr holds because uh we sent the word i and i over here so right now it's just counting like um the more times word i shows up the frequency is going to um, move for, like increase okay so for now wr has this value okay so yeah you can also print the uh, pwt uh, p w r d t okay so one thing i forgot to mention over here you see that there is no pointer because w r itself was basically like this um word record w r there was no pointer okay but p d p w r d t was a pointer we did a malloc for it over here so that's why when we want to see its um, value, we have to make sure that we are using the pointer over here. Okay, we are dereferencing it. So the, it has uh, the value of WR, which is the word, because this is all it has for now. And then we have a um, node, in each, which case it points to null. Okay. Then we have, uh, we can actually print um, the WR and it's going to print this okay another thing it's uh, re referencing it because um, okay because the um, WR inside it was this okay it was a reference um, there's an percent over here so um, it takes in an percent that's why we are actually printing the address of it and not the value of it because um the value of it won't won't make sense well you can give it a try and see what happens okay so uh we have the address that it points to but what does it tell us okay so um this tells us the memory layout of word word record dt object so at the beginning of it it has the word record member and um, in the next part it has the D node member okay and we know that they are all connected with the D node itself like this is the whole um, DT and inside that the D node and so on okay so this is how they are connected if you recall the previous lecture so yeah these are the offsets and you know um, why this is important because we use the offsets off to figure out like um, the payloads value and stuff like that okay
Um, moving on. So right now you can see that after we do the pushback, okay, then the tails value changes. It actually points to the WR. If you look at over here, this is where it is pointing. So it finally makes sense. And it's next is it's previous. Okay, so basically this is head, this is tail, and we just added a WR. This is basically what happened. Okay, because you see that it's next is WR, it's previous is WR, and it's next is this, and it's previous is this. Okay, it all makes sense now, right? I hope it does. <laughs> okay moving on and now you can do is you can actually uh, dereference my list dot head dot next to see the value of um, the head and so on okay you can also print our my list the uh, dlist which will be showing it um, just like before we can actually see um, dot next now we are going to um, take a peek at the payload itself okay so to do that we are basically doing minus eight and this actually works it's kind of like the offsets of we used in the previous lecture and why are we doing minus eight because we saw that over here so it's all starting to make sense now, right? No? Okay, um, honestly, I have no idea how else to explain it, but like this is a trial and error uh, situation, okay? At first, you can check out my lecture or check out everyone's lecture and it won't make sense, but like while you go through it by yourself, little by little, it all starts making sense to you. But um, for now, just um, follow my lead, okay? So yeah, um, by doing minus eight, we can actually take a look at the um, DT itself, like the duct tape. So what happened is the pointer manipulation logic over here is my list dot head dot next points to the denote object within the wrapper object, but the pointer is of type denote. Then we do um, type casting, and it also points to the denote, right? But this nameless pointer has one byte target. Then this minus eight points to the beginning of the wrapper and hence the word record object within the wrapper. But that pointer has one byte target. So by doing this, um, this type casting, this has a word record target. And then we are um dereferencing it and that's how we got our target and this is how it happened like okay um i kind of skipped a few things so um first we are printing this right and we see that we can actually take a look at the d node itself then we are literally just jumping here so what happened was first we are um type casting it so by doing this, um, the stack was kind of like this. This is where our payload is. This is where our D node is. By doing this, we are accessing this. By doing minus eight and type casting it, we are actually starting to point here. But we want this, and which is a word record. Okay, so that's why we are type casting it but then we need the value of it. So that's why we are putting it here and we have the value of it. I think that made sense. I mean, it made sense to me. So yeah, by um, following the whole example, these are the stuff you actually um, saw. Display and interpret the contents of struct variables display and interpret pointer values, display and interpret targets of pointers, use C syntax in specifying uh, pointer expressions, apply pointer arithmetic.
okay yeah <laughs> so we are going to take a look at another um, driver but this time there might be an error okay so we are basically going to do is run a while loop while the um, loop is not empty we are going to keep popping it okay we're going to keep popping it we are going to print whatever we popped here and print a new line and that's it pretty straightforward but like um, we will see that okay so we added five um, nodes right so at the end of it there after five nodes it should stop but what happens is it goes in an infinite loop so let's see how to tackle that one so at first we added this um, pretty straightforward we are putting a breakpoint in the main of line 40 which is basically this okay line 40 and here the loop starts then we are going to keep moving forward so what happens is it um, pops it then um, we are creating a dlist based on that just to have a um, just to take a look at the payload and all of those and then we are going to call a print statement that basically um, prints it in a more human readable way and then prints a new line so this is what was printed okay then we are going to keep moving forward by doing n what happens is it keeps going on forever so um, let's take a look at the values and see what went wrong okay so at first we can print our my list which has head and tail and it basically says that there's something between like these two okay now what we're going to do is check our tail okay which is this value i mean sorry this and this value this is what we are actually um, taking a look at so just like previous time uh, like previous example we are going to typecast it and dereference it and get the value of four which is weird because we saw that after doing our pop it should have uh, it printed four right so it should have gotten rid of four so why do we have four again so it must mean that the pop actually didn't do its work okay so um even did even though we did a pop back it didn't do its job so there is a error over here so let's take a look at the implementation of pop back so what it does is um, back equals to um, the list back um, list then it removes the back and return back so it looks okay right so um, if we take a look at the remove over here let's see what happens what it does is lm previous next equal to lm next and then just returns it there's definitely something wrong here because um, if you remember the um, organization of the t list it was like this so if we remove this we have to make sure that this starts pointing over here and this starts pointing over here but the problem is over here what we did was it made sure that it's pointing here but it didn't make sure that it points here it still exists okay and that's why it happened so this so that means that the dlist remove is not working so um there's something missing so yeah i think you can actually um fix it by yourself so this whole lecture was kind of vague because it is a vague um concept uh it's you get more used to it the more um you work on it but yeah that's about it so yeah see you next time um three more lectures left